Hello there and uh, welcome back to the sixth video in this uh, series. So in the previous video uh, we have uh, implemented the logic needed for us to actually hash our plain text and uh, for that we have created our uh, home view model and uh, two functions. So now in this video it is time for us to actually pass that uh, hashed data from our home fragment to our success fragment. And uh, if we check our project design uh, you will see how our uh, success fragment uh, should look like. So as you can see here, uh, we are going to have only one text view in which we're going to display our uh, hashed text and down below we're going to have uh, one button which will say uh, copy and whenever we click this button copy then a new message will slide from the top and it will say uh, copied, okay? And we're going to create this uh, little animation at the end of this video but for now we're going to focus on uh, sending this data to our success fragment. So first let's open up our navigation graph and let's select our success fragment right here and then we're going to add a new argument here, okay? So the type of this argument uh, should be a string and the name can be for example uh, hash and uh, we are not going to add uh, any default value so just click uh, add. Okay, so now that we have added that uh, argument to our navigation graph, uh, we can open up our home fragment and uh, down below let's scroll until we find this uh, navigate to success method and here I just want to add uh, uh, one more line of code. So here I'm going to create a new variable named uh, directions and I'm going to use a uh, home uh, fragment directions then I'm going to use this action home fragment to success fragment and here as you can see uh, when I press uh, control P inside the parameters of this uh, action then, uh, then uh, Android Studio will not show us uh, any parameter and that means that uh, after we create our argument inside our navigation graph uh, then we should uh, rebuild our project so let's uh, rebuild that and now uh, after that we should be able to see here a new uh, parameter Okay, so now as you can see uh, when we press Control P uh, we're going to see that we need to add here uh, one hash of a type string and uh, we're going to get that uh, hash from the parameters of this uh, navigate to success function. So here I'm going to type uh, hash of a type string. Okay, and here I'm going to pass uh, this hash. Okay, so now uh, instead of calling this uh, get hash data uh, function right here, uh, we're going to cut this part of the code and we're going to place that inside the parameters of this uh, navigate to success. So now the return type of this uh, get hash data will be the actual hash and then uh, we're going to basically get that uh, hash value and we're going to pass that to our success fragment. So now uh, whenever we navigate from our uh, home fragment to success fragment uh, we're going to pass this uh, hashed value as well. Okay so uh, that will be all for this uh, home fragment and now uh, I'm going to open up this uh, success fragment and I'm going to clean that up a little bit. So we're going to remove this uh, unnecessary code which we have uh, removed from our home fragment as well. So let's just remove all of that, okay. So uh, here I'm going to use uh, view binding, okay. So down below we're going to create uh, one uh, read only variable named uh, binding and we're going to use this uh, getter to get the value of our underscore binding, okay. And uh, here I'm going to use uh, underscore binding then uh, fragment success binding dot uh, inflate and then we're going to just inflate our layout right here so I'm going to pass inflator instead and uh, we're going to return here uh, binding dot root and we can remove this uh, question mark of course okay so on the top of this class I'm going to create uh, one uh, variable so private uh, vol named uh, args and it will have the type of uh, success fragment args so this class was uh, automatically generated by our safe args plugin because we have uh, already created our argument inside our uh, navigation graph and now I'm going to use uh, delegate to delegate this to uh, nav args okay so now basically we're going to get the value which we have passed from our home fragment to our success fragment and we're going to log that value so I'm going to just use uh, log.d I'm going to write here success and then args.hash so we can log the actual hash, okay? So now let's run the app and let's uh, check that out. I'm going to observe this uh, log in a uh, logcat right here and let's uh, try and uh, hash some data here. Uh, okay, so here I'm going to type uh, the name of my YouTube channel. Then uh, let's click uh, generate and see uh, what happens. Okay, so uh, our application just crashed and this uh, error says that uh, required argument hash is missing and does not have an Android default value. So it appears that we need to add a default value for our argument. So let's get back to our navigation graph 
and here for this uh, argument we're going to add the uh, default value and default value can be for example uh, empty okay with a capital letter E all right so now let's run the app and let's see if uh, everything is gonna work uh, just fine okay so let's repeat the same thing here so click and generate and now uh, when we open up our uh, success fragment then we're going to receive here uh, empty and uh, okay let me just check our home fragment down below okay so it appears that I have forgot to pass these uh, directions inside this uh, navigation controller okay so I'm going to remove this uh, action from here and I'm going to pass these uh, directions and now uh, everything should work uh, just fine so let's uh, open our logcat let's open up our uh, emulator let's type here the same thing click uh, generate and now when we get to our success fragment then uh, we're going to receive our hashed value and now it works uh, perfectly fine okay so the next thing which we need to do is to actually design our success fragment and uh, now we're going to do that so let's open up our uh, layout file for that so fragment success okay so the first thing we need to add uh, one text view and i'm going to connect that uh, text view uh, to a parent uh, left right uh, and the top and i'm going to add uh, one button down below so i'm going to connect uh, left right to a parent and the bottom constraint of this button to a parent as well so let me just zoom in okay i'm going to select the layout width to zero here and i'm going to select this uh, text view and connect its uh, bottom constraint to a top constraint of this button so all margins here on this text view should be 32 for example okay so like that and now let's get to our code here and let's change some values so the first thing i'm going to change this uh, id so press shift plus f6 and here i'm going to write uh, hash underscore uh, text view so click refactor so the next thing i want to add here a uh, text uh, size to uh, let's say 26 sp then a uh, text color to uh, till 200 then uh, text uh, style to bold next uh, text uh, alignment i'm going to set it to center uh, layout width i'm going to set it to zero dp so it can match the constraints here okay so this is how our text view should look like and next i'm going to design this uh, button down below so before that i need to add uh, one more icon here in our drawables directory so let's add a new vector asset and i'm going to choose here a new icon so let's type uh, copy okay so this one I'm going to change its name to just simple as uh, IC copy, click next and finish. So the ID of this button should be changed, so press uh, shift plus F6 and let's change this to uh, copy underscore button, click uh, refactor and here I'm going to write uh, copy and let's extract this string to our uh, strings XML, so press alt plus enter, then enter and enter. Uh, here let's select uh, text uh, style to bold, uh, text uh, size to uh, 16 sp for example uh, here a uh, background uh, tint can be uh, blue okay so just uh, the same as our first button uh, next i'm going to add here an icon so i need to use a uh, app icon okay so this attribute and here i need to specify drawable slash uh, ic copy so the height of this button can be uh, 70 dp and uh, i'm going to add here margins to each and every side to 16 okay so the same as in our previous example and now we need to basically uh, move this uh, icon on the right side to basically be a little bit closer to our uh, to our text here and for that we're going to use a padding attribute so i'm going to specify here a padding start and a padding end to uh, 140 okay padding uh, end 140 so i have basically experimented with those uh, numbers to find the perfect one okay so now our button looks uh, even better okay uh, so for now let's go to our success fragment and uh, here instead of uh, logging this uh, hash i'm going to use a uh, binding dot uh, hash text view and i'm going to set its uh, text from our arguments so let's use args dot hash and uh, let's run our app again so now uh, we should be able to see this uh, hash value inside our text view so let's type here the same thing click uh, generate and uh, there we go so now we have displayed this uh, hashed value inside our success fragment so uh, the next thing uh, which we need to do uh, we need to create the logic to basically copy this uh, value 
when we press this uh, copy button, okay? So after we create that logic, uh, we're going to create uh, animation uh, which will slide from the top and uh, that animation should show us a simple message that says uh, copied, like we saw earlier in our project design, so as you can see here. So this uh, message uh, should slide from the top slowly and we're going to create that animation a little bit later. Okay, so inside our success fragment, I'm going to create uh, on click listener for our button. So binding dot uh, copy button dot uh, set on click listener and here I'm going to create a new function on uh, copy uh, clicked so let's press alt plus center and let's create that function and uh, here inside I'm going to create a new function as well copy uh, to clipboard and uh, this function will take one parameter and that is uh, a simple uh, string uh, value and that uh, string value will be our uh, hashed uh, value so let's use our hash from our arguments and let's create this function so here I'm going to create a new variable named uh, clipboard manager and I'm going to use a require activity to get the access to this uh, system service and uh, here I'm going to pass uh, context dot uh, clipboard service and I'm going to cast that to a clipboard manager. So uh, down below I'm going to create a new variable named uh, clip data. And uh, here I'm going to use a clip uh, data class. Then it's method uh, new uh, plain text. And here uh, we need to pass uh, two parameters. So the first parameter is basically the actual description of this uh, text uh, which we're going to copy. And I'm going to write here uh, encrypted text. And uh, as a second parameter, uh, we need to basically pass the actual value which we need to copy to our clipboard. And that is the actual hash from our parameters. Okay. And finally, we need to call our clipboard manager. And we need to call this uh, set primary clip. And we need to pass a clip data. So now, uh, whenever we press our copy button, uh, we should be able to copy to clipboard this uh, hashed value. So let's uh, test that out. Okay, so here I'm going to type here the same thing. Click uh, generate. So now uh, when I press this uh, copy button, uh, we're not going to see any uh, message or a snack bar. But uh, even though we are not going to see any feedback from that button, let's test and see if uh, this value will be actually copied to the clipboard. So click copy and now let's uh, go to home and for example let's open these uh, messages and uh, let me just type here uh, or a long click and click paste and now you will see that basically we have successfully copied to clipboard our uh, hashed value. So that function is uh, working perfectly fine and there is uh, one more thing left to do here inside this success fragment and that is actually creating this uh, animation or this uh, message from our uh, project design. So the first thing which we need to do is to actually design this little message and for that we're going to create a new layout file. Okay, so uh, inside our uh, layout directory here I'm going to create a new uh, layout resource file and uh, here the name of this file can be a uh, copied uh, message. So click OK. Alright, so the root element here uh, will be constraint layout and inside this uh, layout we're going to add uh, just two views. Uh, the first is the actual view, so let me just find that right here. So view, let's set that right here. Uh, let's connect all those constraints here to a parent. Okay, so uh, now I'm going to set uh, this uh, layout height of our constraint layout to uh, 32 dp. Okay, so it can be a little bit smaller, so like that. And uh, now I need to add uh, one uh, text view on top of this view. So let's add this uh, simple text view, okay. So I'm going to connect uh, all those constraints uh, to this uh, view right here. So don't worry if those constraints uh, were not uh, properly constrained. We're going to do that uh, from the code. So first let's change this uh, ID of this view. So uh, shift plus F6. And I'm going to name this uh, message uh, background. And uh, here uh, shift F6 uh, message text view. So here I'm going to change uh, those constraints. So I'm going to copy this ID. So uh, I'm going to rename this uh, constraint start to start off. And here top to top off. Okay, so let's pass here a new ID. End to end, okay. And the bottom to uh, bottom. Okay, so now our text view is uh, totally constrained uh, with our uh, uh, view here which is the exact thing which we uh, wanted. And the next, uh, I want to add a background color to our view. So let's add a background attribute. And let's specify this uh, color blue, okay. And uh, down below, I'm going to change this uh, text to say uh, copied and this exclamation mark. So I'm going to change this uh, text uh, color to be uh, white. 
Okay, so now it looks uh, even better. So uh, now basically we're going to include this uh, layout file inside our uh, fragment success layout. But there is uh, one more thing uh, which we need to uh, change here. So uh, as I already mentioned, uh, we're going to create uh, animation where this uh, copied message will basically slide from the top of this uh, of this uh, screen. So now what we need to do, uh, we need to place basically this uh, message uh, outside of this screen. So later when we create the animation that this uh, message can slide from the top, okay? And basically from the outside of the screen. So for that I'm going to select this uh, message background and I'm going to set its uh, bottom margin to uh, 65. So now you will see that basically this message now uh, disappeared on the top outside of our screen. And the reason why I have chose this uh, 65 is because uh, the actual height of our uh, message background is uh, 32. And when we double that value we're going to get uh, 64. But uh, just to be sure I have typed here uh, 65. So now we cannot see basically this message on the screen. So now that we have designed that uh, we can go back to our fragment success here. And right here I'm going to search for uh, include. And I'm going to add that right here and from here I'm going to select this uh, copied message layout so click OK so I'm going to set its uh, layout height to be uh, 32 dp okay so like that and let me place that here on the top so let me connect uh, left uh, right and the top constraint to a parent so here uh, margin should be zero okay and now I'm going to connect this uh, text view top margin to this uh, new include view right here so let's remove this uh, constraint and let's add here a new constraint to uh, bottom of this uh, include uh, view okay and here also let's add a 32 margin okay okay so uh, after that let's open up our uh, success fragment and uh, here I'm going to create a new function so private suspend function so I'm going to use suspend keyword because we're going to use a delay function from our coroutines so let's call this apply uh, animations this function will have no parameters and here I'm going to call uh, binding dot uh, include dot uh, message background then I'm going to add uh, this animate uh, method and then I'm going to call a uh, translation y so uh, translation y okay here I'm going to pass uh, ADF and duration uh, can be for example 200 uh, okay uh, equals uh, 200 uh, milliseconds okay and uh, after that I'm going to call binding dot uh, include dot uh, message text view and here I also want to animate translation Y and the value should be the same so ADF uh, duration can be the same so 200 milliseconds so after that I want to add a delay here of uh, two seconds and uh, now I want to add uh, basically those the same animations but this time I'm going to change uh, their values to minus 80 so I can animate back this uh, copied message layout uh, to its original place and here uh, duration can be a little bit longer to for example 500 milliseconds okay so now I'm going to call this apply animations function in this uh, on copy clicked but of course uh, we need to add a life cycle scope here so I'm going to add uh, a life cycle scope to launch a coroutine and here I'm going to pass those uh, two functions and of course uh, at the end I just need to override the on destroy view here to avoid the memory leaks so just set underscore binding to uh, null okay and now let's run the app and see if this uh, message will actually show up okay so let's type here the same thing click uh, generate and now uh, click this copy button and then uh, you will see that this uh, animation or our uh, copied message layout will appear from the top and uh, it will disappear back within uh, 500 uh, milliseconds. So basically in this animation we have specified that we want to show this uh, layout uh, in a duration of uh, 200 milliseconds and uh, we want to hide it in a duration of 500 milliseconds. So as you can see it works uh, perfectly fine. And uh, that's how you create this uh, animation. Okay, so uh, that will be all for uh, this video. And uh, in the next video, we're going to finalize this project. We're going to add the actual uh, splash screen and uh, maybe uh, fix a few things. So uh, that's it for this video.